material would be the cereal, the sugar, the milk which gets poured into the bowl and the older material would be the bowl itself. If you flip the cereal bowl over and you start pouring material on top of the cereal bowl, it slides off to the side, well, that you could think of that as a dome where the oldest material is in the center and the younger material is off to the sides. Here's a couple of uh, pictures. Uh, here's a dome. There's some up warping here. Uh, definitely you can see you know you have an anticline here and this material some of the material is eroded away and it leaves the oldest material in the center and the youngest is on the edge. Here is a basin or a syncline and here, this would be the edge of the bowl on the outside and so that would be the old stuff and the youngest stuff would pile up in the middle. Uh, Michigan is a good example of a basin this would be the edge of the cereal bowl and this all this material here is put into the cereal bowl. If you've gone up through the, uh, the straits and up towards uh, Sault Ste. Marie you start cutting through you see the road cuts uh, that's really the edge of the Michigan Basin. Uh, this is a link to uh, some more information on the Michigan Basin and we'll look at it in class also. A good example of a dome or some up warping are the Black Hills of South Dakota where Mount Rushmore is. Uh, these are mostly granite type of, of features here and these are not normal or reverse faulted mountains. These were from an up warping and the softer material has eroded away leaving uh, the Black Hills. Uh, this next one we're going to take a look at fossils, what makes up a good fossil and what index fossils are. And here's a little picture, a little diagram of how we're going to do this. Fossils, really you need hard parts, bones, shells, teeth, etc. Rapid burial is important. If the, uh, the critter is sitting out after it died, you know, it can get eroded away, it can get eaten, and it can get scattered, and you would not have good fossils. But if you get rapid burial, like from a flood, stuff gets uh, covered up very quickly on uh, mud pits tar pits the La Brea tar pits outside of uh, LA is a good example of this things make good fossils and fossils are in sedimentary rocks as we know you get into the uh, into the igneous it's magma or molten rock rock which has melted and then again with the metamorphic rock what ends up happening is the heat and pressure would destroy any fossils that would be in the rock layer Index fossils we briefly touched on in class, but index fossils are used to uh, relatively date different layers of rock. And what you look for in index fossils easily recognizable. You know, everybody agrees that this is what it is. It's got to be widespread geographically and a relatively short lifespan. Now, again, relatively short may end up being uh, you know, a few million years old. Uh, your uh, last couple of uh, Oh, assignments in the computer lab, you did some uh, relative dating using, really, you used uh, some index fossils. Uh, the geologic time scale, many, many forms out there. Uh, you can see, you know, we've looked at this, you looked at this with the, uh, especially with the uh, last uh, activity you did in, in class, relative, the relative time dating. And one thing I want to notice down here is this, what's called the Precambrian. And this Precambrian period covers about 88% of Earth's history. And the Earth is like four and a half to five billion years old. And 88% of that time is Precambrian. Uh, when you guys looked at your football field activity and you saw most of the uh, most of the things were really put near the top or relatively recent geologically speaking. Uh, a couple things you might want to know. Paleozoic, the age of ancient life, and the Quaternary is the age in which we live in currently. A couple uh, big extinctions and the first one is uh, the Paleozoic. And when you think of extinction, uh, you're wiping out species. Well, this one occurred at the end of the Paleozoic area and all these marine critters, which you know the earth was covered by a lot of sea at this time, died off. And this was due to uh, cooling of the earth. 
Uh, most marine critters do like warmer water and what end up happening as you get these climatic changes or cooling you know many of these critters died off. The big one everybody talks about of course is you know the, the dying off of the uh, dinosaurs the Mesozoic extinction in which the dinosaurs died off. Uh, a meteorite hit the earth threw all this dust ash and other material into the atmosphere uh, global cooling took place what ended up happening there's no more pho photosynthesis so the the animals that ate the grasses died off therefore the meat eaters the carnivores like t-rex here died off also the uh, the best piece of evidence for this collision is when uh, meteorites contain iridium and there is a thin band of iridium found worldwide what's called the uh, Cretaceous tertiary boundary and this is the good evidence for that